Did you like that article last week? Uh, I think so. Okay. I, yeah, I was, I was pretty happy with it. Yeah. It was about me. <laughs> your, your mic cord is kind of... Tangled? Yeah. Fix it. <laughs> and if you don't mind, is it okay if we, if we don't talk about NYPD Blue? Like, I have no problem with that. Yeah. You're not, it's, it's gonna Could speak. we talk about Guiding Light? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was at a, a movie a few weeks ago, and uh, there were like, people chattering during the movie, and I was bemoaning the fact that movie theaters don't use ushers anymore. Right. Now, you worked as a movie usher. Right, I would have handled those people. <laughs> Would you find your cell one? You find your seat, please, sir. Oh, that's a semi-automatic weapon. <laughs> You're fine. Because that's why I would. Today it's different. You can't. You know, today it's different. Well, what was that job like for you? What kind of adventures did you have as as an usher? I had some adventures. We had a great usher's room upstairs, and we would have various visitors stop by. And, um, I, the, the real value, the answer to that is I got to see movies, and I got to see films 80, 90, 100 times sometimes, and most people think, oh, please. But a, a great film, you see a different film every time, and you learn. And uh, so I, I look back, I, be, I became a student of film as a result of the job. And great dental benefits, too. I mean, I didn't last long enough. But. You know, I've always been fascinated at the attitudes that actors have about movies that they're making that go on to be huge hits or like icons uh, with, with culture. Right. Uh, Officer and a Gentleman and First Blood, when you were making those movies, did you think uh, that they were going to go on to be big hits? I, said, I, looked, I read it, icon written all over it. This is a hit, and that's how I usually... Uh, I don't know, but you know, those are interesting projects. And Officer and a Gentleman was a really neat project because all of those people, those actors, were like, you know, it was like a launching pad for all of those careers, and that was neat. And there was a real sense of that when we made that movie, too. I, I look at it now, it's like looking through your high school yearbook. You know, it's, pretty, it's a nice movie. I interviewed Harrison Ford uh, recently. What's he doing now? Uh, Sabrina. A really? A remake. The oh, romantic is that comedy. going straight to video? <laughs> But he talked about the fact that he didn't achieve fame uh, until his 30s. Right. And he was grateful for that because he felt he was better uh, Equipped, able to handle yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is that something you can uh, yeah, identify I, I with? I feel that way, too. Uh, I think it would be, uh, it's tougher, you know, scrutiny is a tough thing. And then if you kind of factor in your adolescence into that scrutiny and, uh, you know, uh, I'm glad that I've kind of gotten some of my, you know, issues out of the way and I can kind of focus on the opportunities. I, I'm grateful too. With uh, Kiss of Death, I mean you've shot films in, in widely different locations. When you're shooting in New York and maybe not some of the best neighborhoods, uh, do you notice a difference in the reaction from people who are watching the filming, say opposed to uh, like LA? Well yeah, I mean you know they're a little more demonstrative in New York and uh, they, sh they, they don't hide their emotions. <laughs> in New York and so we used to draw some colorful crowds and uh, and uh, but you know that's that's not bad I mean and hopefully they'll be in the theater they'll come to see the movie but that's fun you yeah. know I mean, the city embraces you you know and uh, it, it, sometimes it can add to it add to the energy when you think of surreal uh, sets that you've shot on uh, the strip joint set yeah was that a little bizarre it was pretty surreal um, you know, but probably pretty accurate. It wasn't very, you know, it wasn't a, a, exactly a tasteful place, you know, but that's kind of that world, and uh, it was, you know, it kind of, it could have been floating somewhere in the sky, you know. But I think it also added to another kind of uh, bizarre texture to all those sequences, too. Yeah. You do something in this movie I, I had not seen you do before, which is driving a big rig. Yeah. And you looked uh, very at ease uh, behind the wheel. Uh, did I? I get that class four license. The Teamsters would love that. Yeah. So I was faking it. And they were pulling me, and I was faking it. Um, I remember when uh, that uh, the TV show you had on before, uh, when uh, that uh, Guiding Light. Yeah, yeah. When uh, when uh, it came out, and um, suddenly saw your face uh, on all these magazines and uh, David Cruz's Sex and Popular Bull. Mechanics. Yeah, you saw that exactly. Yeah. Cover. yeah. I know you had to handle that in your own way, but how did your family react to all I that? Don't, I, don't, uh, I don't, don't talk to my family. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I think that you kind of uh, 
I think you kind of grow together on that issue. You know, you're right. You, you're, you absorb the impact of that change, and it's kind of weird suddenly for everybody. And then, but you kind of you adapt. You know, because then it, it, one minute it's unreality, and the next minute it's your reality, and you figure out how to handle it. Yeah. And one very quick final question in a lighthearted vein, yeah. The worst advice that you ever got about your career, maybe not advice that you followed, but what was the worst piece of advice someone ever gave you? Um, the worst pe piece of advice. Uh, well, it, when, you know, I, I, uh, I tend to stay away from hype in general, and so I, I have a little, a little filter in here, and uh, so I, I, I don't hear much of the the bad advice anymore, you know, so, uh, but, you know, people uh, along the way have attempted to discourage me, and, and I had an agent look at my tape one time and say, I don't see it, it's not going to happen, I think you're wasting your time out here, I'll just be straight with you right now, I think you should uh, make for the airport, and then, it's funny because I did a film and then a year later the same agent was standing there wringing her hands going, is there any way we can make this, you know what I mean, so, so I've had, you know, setbacks and discouragements and stuff.